Hello everyone and welcome. It's Carol from the Crafty Emporium on this horribly miserable wintry kind of day. Um, bringing you today the tutorial that I promised on my last video for the nifty notebooks that I've created. On the previous video I showed three of the notebooks using Calico Collage digital kits. This one I've used um, one of Victoria Designs digital kits for Alice in, Wonderfl or Alice in Wonderland and speak properly um, so as you can see there's the digital image here and then I've put some dotty buttons here I've used blue seam binding as the closure and that's one of the images on the back I'm just going to show you briefly the inside in case you didn't see the last video um, so that you can see how the little notebook works so there's the flap here which is magnetized so it does make that wonderful little snappy noise um, I've, on the inside flap I've put one of the images from the kit and then on the inside cover I've put one of the pages on there now I haven't finished decorating this um, I'm only showing you how the pages work so that basically you flip the page and you've got this funny little bit and then you've got um, a pocket from the funny little bit there you flip the page up so that you get to write on the back of the pages as well as the obvious pages that you have in the notebook and then every so often when you get to that funny little bit you can flip it up again so that is basically what i am going to be demonstrating to you today the actual little booklet itself uses four sheets of paper now i'm just going to use um plain cream paper just to demonstrate to you you can use digital paper you can use printed decorative papers um, you can use plain papers um, what I would suggest to you is to probably use plain papers first of all um, because one of the things you have to watch out for for the patterned paper is the direction of the pattern because we're folding the pages in half it means that some of the pattern might be upside down at least with plain paper or plain card then at least then you can cut out your images or cut out your pages and stick them onto the existing pages that you've created and then you're assured that the pattern is going to be the right way up now whilst I'm using A4 paper, because that's what we have in the UK, you can use letter paper. You can use whatever size you want. You will need to alter a couple of the measurements accordingly, but it's simple enough to work out. Okay, so to the folding of the paper, we're using a whole sheet, we're not cutting it down, and we're going to fold it in half, first one way and then the other, ensuring that the corners meet and then when it's folded I'm just going to use my bone folder to just accentuate that crease and then I'm opening it back out and I'm folding it in the opposite direction so again from point to point finger creasing it and then using my bone folder to just accentuate that crease and then opening it out so as you can see from this here now I've got one two three four sections now I'm going to cut along one of these folded lines just the short one not the long ones but just one of the short ones and we're going to cut it and you can use it with you can cut it with scissors or your paper trimmer and we're just going to cut along this line to that center fold and don't leave it short it doesn't matter if you go fractionally beyond the crease mark all right so that it does this you're then going to turn your paper long ways on and you're going to have the cut on the left hand side left for left all right so we're going to have it on this side and we're going to fold it down so basically folding it in half again and then on this side we've got two separate flaps of paper now all right so the first flap is going to be folded on top and the second flap is going to go underneath and there you've got the basis of one of the segments so you've got page the funny bit and a page okay and then on this side if you opened it up look you've got two folded edges there 
All right, now I'm going to make a pile of four of these and sit them just in a separate pile so that they're all facing the same way, so that the fold lines are on one side and the open sides are on the other side. So I'll show you that one again. Fold this in half and to make sure that those points meet, finger press the paper and then use the band folder to just fold it and accentuate that crease. Open it up and fold it in half in the opposite direction. Finger crease and then use the bone folder to accentuate the crease. Open it back up and then we're going to cut along this line here. So it's along one of the short lines and not one of the long ones. And cut it until you reach that centre point. Sit it back down so that it's lengthways and have the cut on the left hand side. Fold it down towards you so that it's now folded in half and then fold this first top flap over to the right and then fold the other flap down to the back so that you're folding it to the back. So now I've got the loose edges of the paper on this right hand side and I've got the folded edges on this left hand side and I'm going to sit that on top of the one that I've already done. So I'm going to do four of those and in true Blue Peter style, here's some I've done earlier. So I'm just going to again make sure that I've got the folded edges on this side and I've got the loose edges all on this side. Now then, if at any point you're not sure and don't quite understand what it is that I've just done, please put the video on pause, do a bit of a rewind and just watch it again just to make sure. Okay, so I'm just going to sit two of them, two of these segments, one on top of the other, as I've just said, so that the loose edges are on the right and the folded edges are on the left. I'm going to flip one over. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this page to this page as though it's going to form a pocket. So I'm going to place glue across the top, the side, let me move it up a little bit, across the top, the side and the bottom. So that when I stick those together, I've then got a pocket here. Okay, so I'll just do that. Just making sure my glue's down to the bottom. And I like using these um, little glue bottles with the metal nibs because I just think it gives a really nice fine line of glue and it's not a great big globular glue that then ends up oozing out the sides. So I'm just drawing a nice fine line of glue along those three sides. Okay, and now I'm going to stick those two together and I can just twizzle them and make sure that they're lined up and stick it together nicely and then I can sit that, flip it over and sit it on top so that I can just put a little bit of weight and pressure on that to make sure now that that's going to be adhered together. So I can now leave that like that one, I can bring this one in so that it's got the loose ends on this side and it's got the folded edges on this side and I'm now going to lift up this one and this one and stick those two together so again I'm going to place glue around the three edges so down the center where that folded edge is across the top and across the bottom and then I'm going to stick those two pages together and again I can just twiddle it round so that I can get it all to sit together nicely twiddle it back and then I can lift that up and push that over so that I can now 
push put a little bit of pressure on that to make sure that it's all sticking together nicely and again bring the next section in the last section this time I'm going to put glue on here because there's there's now this depth of paper that we're trying to deal with and there's not much depth on this one but there's a plenty of depth on this side so it's now easier to place glue and it's the same it's as long it's one of those it's as long as it's short doing it on one side rather than the other and again put the glue across the top the bottom and down along that folded edge and that will sit on top of there and then I can just open those up to make sure that they have lined up properly and sticking together nicely and then I can sit the unit on top push down on it with a little bit of pressure okay and that's my pages done okay so I'm going to put those to one side for a moment now going to bring in the cover now this is where you will need to do your own adjustment if you are using a different size paper and card to A4 so basically what I did was I placed my pages on top and I allowed for a small gap here and a small gap at the top so that I could just roughly work out where I needed my first crease to be okay and then I flipped it over did a crease again on this side because you're going to have a small panel there and then I could work out where I needed to crease it on this side so then I could work out the small panel on that side I also worked out the depth so I measured the depth of the paper added an eighth of an inch on that end an eighth of an inch on that end so that I knew then where I needed to cut across the whole length of my paper so for me I'm now going to because I've used a4 I'm going to crease it at four and a quarter and four and a half eight and three quarters and nine and one eighth okay now I'm going to cut the paper I didn't cut it beforehand and there is a reason why now the depth that I wanted was six inches so I'm just going to cut six inches so I place it in lengthways and then cut it off so this is the only bit of, pa of paper out of the whole five sheets that I've used that is the bit that's left over but I do have a usage for this in a bit and you'll see why I cut it after I scored it so now I'm just going to fold over these fold marks that I've just created, the score lines, burnish the score lines down because this is really quite a thick piece of card that I'm using. And you'll notice that one of the score line panels is narrower than the other and that's because it just needs to be that little bit narrower and this one. so this one needs to be narrower and this one needs to be wider so my page is now this very back page I'm going to stick onto here now again you could do the gluing it across the top and the side and across the bottom and then when you stick it down on there it then forms a pocket in here or you can just stick the whole thing down so that it's really secure and in place and I'm actually just going to stick the whole thing down rather than leaving it as a pocket because I like the security sorry my glue hasn't dropped down towards my there we go um, no still not gone down come on just clear the nozzle 
What's the nozzle's got? A little bit blocked. Nice glue. <laughs> Still don't want to come. Come on, come and play. Only when you're filming, right? Close there. Right, try again. There we go. So I just like the security of the fact that the whole sheet is carrying the whole weight of the booklet. And I just want to make sure that the whole thing is covered so that it's supporting. I think I've got a little bit of thick glue inside. My glue because it's just blocked itself up again. Let's try that. There we go. It's done it again. Oh, there's me yet. Yeah. These are brilliant. Love these. And then mine goes and keeps clogging up. Doesn't normally do this. <laughs> Sod's law. And then I'm going to just put some glue all the way across there except of course if my nozzle decides to block itself up again which it has done hey there we go see look i had a lump of glue there That was the little devil that was being the problem. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to sit that on that back panel and just make sure that my border spaces are the same at the top and the bottom. And that's it. Done. So what I did with mine was I placed a magnet here on the flap and here on the cover so that I then covered it over with my decorative paper so that that snaps shut and then you open up the first one and then you've got that funny bit and then that lifts up and flaps back down then here you've got the pocket then the next one you've got the funny bit which flips up and flips down and then you've got then you've got the pocket next one then you've got the funny bit and then it flips up flips down and then you've got the pocket and then the next one now this one when you open this last one it actually just shows the previous pages that you've um, already opened up so it doesn't introduce you to a new set of pages on the back okay and then because of the depth of these pages you actually have to just lift the cover up a little to be able to write quite nicely on these last couple of pages but that is the basics of the nifty notebook so I hope that that all makes sense I'm just going to put this here as well um, so these were what I just quickly wrote out. So it's four sheets of A4, folders shown and glued together as shown. It's one sheet of A4 card um, and cut to six inches wide um, by the length of the car card and score at four and a quarter, four and a half, eight and three quarters, nine and one eighth. But I then cut the six inches after I'd done the crease marks. Now the reason why I did that as well and why I saved this was that if you wanted to use this as your closure let's make sure I've got it the right way around because one's narrower this one's wider this fold so it does wrap around so that you could actually use that bit that you cut off as your closure and then either glue the two together or magnetize it and then that just slides up and down if you glue it or it snaps off you could even attach the back of the book to the back of the card so there's a few options and then you've got no wastage whatsoever anyway that's my nifty notebook
um, I hope that you found that interesting and I hope to see pictures um, on Facebook on the, on your groups if you happen to have a go at doing it or on my own group if you happen to be one of my own group members. Right, I'm off now for a brew because I'm thirsty after all of that. See you later. Bye.